How are you, my trading warrior brother? Welcome back to FACE. I'm great. Can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah, you sound great, Mark. Okay, Loud thank and you. clear. Um, Mark, you know, before we get started uh, with what's going on right now, I just want to acknowledge that uh, the last time we talked, you were looking for uh, some type of correction in February. Yeah. Uh, got one all the way down to 37.30. The market held that line in the sand at 37. Great trade, Mark. Just want to acknowledge it. Uh, you called a very nice turn in February. What are you thinking now, buddy? Well, you know, what's interesting is that February brought about turns in the majority of world markets, uh, except for really the U.S. market. I mean, we did see a minor pullback in technology, obviously, and in growth. Uh, but we still haven't made highs higher than the February peaks in China, in Japan, right. in India, in, you know, EEM, you know, and a lot of these uh, different things outside of the U.S. So it was an important uh, time. And I think that's really one thing that, it, you know, it's key to concentrate on is that, you know, when you look at things globally, it's not just really the U.S. that, you know, the majority, a lot of, a lot of markets did in fact peak out. So, you know, here's the, really the key chart here and just looking at technology versus the S&P. And this is really the yeah. big break. And you did see sort of a relative peak back in February. And now we've really completely broken down out of this pattern relatively. So, you know, tech is 27% of the S&P. I think it's always important to, uh, you know, to take that into consideration. And if you look at just, can you see this chart? This is GAN's mass pressure index. And, you know, we did show a minor peak there and, and a bottom in March and rally pretty sharply in mid-April. So now I expect that this actually plays out very similar to what we've seen, you know, in 10, 20, 30, 60 year cycles uh, overlaid. You know, when you look back at, 2011, uh, 2001, 1991, you know, you do tend to see, uh, you know, weakness specifically from July into September of the year. So I think that's going to be this year's largest period of volatility is going to start in late July. But I, I do think that the latter part of May has the potential to turn down pretty sharply. Uh, that could be our first 10 to 15 percent pullback. And uh could we squeeze out a new high in SPX and not in NASDAQ 100? Because they're like two different animals, the charts, the relative weakness uh, in NASDAQ 100. You know, what's interesting is, uh, you know, let me see if I can show, I'm, I'm going to, let me see if I can this real quick. So I'll just pull up uh, a couple different charts here. It'll take me a second to, to pull up. You know, I view the wave structure as likely leading to one final push higher. You know, I think from uh, March, we've seen already, you know, three waves up. We're in this sort of choppy fourth. And, and I think that we're likely going to push higher. And this is specifically just from the March lows. And, and let me see if I can, I can pull this up real quick and, uh, and give you uh, a feel for, for how I sort of view the world so this is uh so so the question was could we get a new high in s and I think we are going to get a new high yeah i think s and likely gets to 4300 or so okay and nasdaq most likely does not confirm by making a new high what do you think um i i think the nasdaq probably can still make a high if what i'm thinking is right because this still should have one final move up I mean, if you look at the, the chart, I, I view this as being, um, you know, honestly, three waves up and now we're trying to stall. I think this is a completed fourth as of this morning. And we should actually make a minor new high up to probably 14.4, 14.5 in the NASDAQ. And so that's going to really get a lot of people pulled up. But the momentum has clearly been dropping off. We've seen a lot of negative divergence. And that's been pretty widespread for a while. Sentiment has been off the charts bullish, but we're really in the stage of the rally where sentiment doesn't matter, you know, um, yeah. it, it, it sometimes in normal markets, you get peaks and troughs and sentiment and it, it tends to be effective. And, and recently it just hasn't been something to really lean on to, to, to really think that's all that uh, important. So, so a cycle you've shown a few times, Mark really showed, uh, uh, you know, like, the top being, you know, sometime in April and, yep. you know, these are long-term cycles. So yep. uh, you're, you're thinking we'd stretch till the end of May. I think that's right. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. And that might be just one top and then we actually pull back and, and uh, 
you know, we might be able to, to double test in a potentially uh, sometime. It, it, um, who knows? But, you know, but, but I'm, I'm thinking at least now that we, you know, sell off into the fall. And, and so you, you have an initial peak in May, you saw till June, you, you rally back. And then, uh, and then you really start, for those that are familiar of like the seven year agricultural cycle known as the Shemitah year, that's coming together along with the presidential uh, cycle. And both of those tend to be very nasty for the market. When were you bar mitzvahed? I'm not, I'm not Jewish, but I, I have. Oh, come on. I'm going to, uh, right now, I'm, I'm going to, this is your bar mitzvah <laughs> live on face. All there you, you have to do, Mark, is say, Absolutely. today I am a man. That's right. Shalom. Now, I, you know, I don't, I don't. Shalom uh, alechem. All right. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai for uh, exactly. something like that. Yeah, I've All been right. to a few bar mitzvahs. That's the extent uh, of my. Okay. Uh, but I, you know what, uh, you know, you're, a lot of people are starting to look at this uh, came from what, the. Torah code, right? The Shemitah? Uh, you know, I read about it actually in the Foundation of Cycles in their recent um, newsletter for April, and, and some guy uh, mentioned it, and I, I had not put that together, but that combined with just the, there's a 41-month cycle, there's a 60-year cycle, so from 1962, we should have a pretty nasty 2022. That, that could be the majority of the weakness. That tends to be, in my opinion, one of the, one of the better longer term cycles to study GAN's master time factor concentrated on the 60 year. And that's always important, okay. you know, but, yeah. but any given year, it, it's always key to look at the 10, 20, 30 and, and just do overlays. So, so, um, so uh, you know, one of my, uh, another guest was looking at the Shemitah and I wanted to ask you, since you know, GAN a little bit, uh, I had another guest who said that years that end in an odd number, like we're in 2021, aren't usually yeah good years for the market is that true well um you know the majority of of the study that i've i've done with that is largely just based on uh you know looking at years ending in in five and eight as being very good years ending in zero as being negative and and two okay. typically can mark the end of bear markets uh one you know i don't have any specific studies uh, okay based on that but uh, okay so uh uh, what, what are you thinking here? Uh, I don't want to interrupt your flow, but uh, uh, the dollar is going to play a role in this, isn't it? Uh, do you think I that think the dollar is going to start to turn down pretty sharply uh, in the month of uh, June? I think there's it may, may tip, typically is the second most bullish month of the year for the U.S. dollar index uh, going okay. back since a long time. So January tends to be very, very good. May is the second best. Uh, let me see if I can I can just pull up a chart real quick and and uh, on here and we'll see. Uh, I was thinking we had a chance to go to. Uh, I, I do think that this month is going to. I think this this month is going to rally in the U.S. dollar index, and then I'm actually uh, will we'll turn very very negative uh, just after right around the 21st of the month. I think the dollar is going to start to turn down pretty viciously. And, and okay. uh, we'll, we'll have a we'll have another. Um, yeah, this, this is not. Let me see. Hmm. I'm going to stop this share and I'm going to reshare a different screen because I'll show you a couple things I'm looking at that are over here. I apologize for the break up here. But You're the captain. I'm the captain. No captain, my captain. Um, <laughs> so here's just a. Uh, this is a trading view chart. And I just want to make this quick point is that when you look at just the wave structure of the move up, you know, this entire move is really just a three way bounce from right. the beginning of January. We had a very well-defined three wave move up that began this move. So, you know, right from the get go that any sort of rally here is, is really a corrective rally to the ongoing downtrend. And you look at the move just since you know, we saw the peak back in, in late March, and it's been very impulsive compared to this move up. So I think this marks the end of, a, of an impulsive wave. We are starting a counter trade, a counter trend bounce. So I'm expecting that actually this probably gets to 92 and a half or so, 92 sometime over the next couple of weeks. Okay. And that would be something it should occur if what I'm thinking is right in a three way fashion. You really want to sell into that. The move down after that would be much more extreme. Anything obviously under these lows would be uh, just a chance to, to 
you know, really get long the euro. I think, you know, a lot of what, what Biden, not to get political, but I think a lot of the, you know, China, Russia, a lot of these countries are making an effort to, to really get away from the U.S. dollar and, and get into the euro and, uh, you know, China starting trading with more with Russia and looking at the ruble. So I, I think that the dollar and say what you will about the deficit and, and six trillion dollars in spending in, in six months. And, and you know, the, obviously, at some point, that's going to be problematic. We'll see if the Fed gets put into a tight corner and is forced to uh you know, use some sort of operation twist or, or something to, uh, you know, put some pressure on, on yields. But I think the dollar and yields both rally over the next two to three weeks. And, and that's going to be a chance to really go the other way and, uh, and, uh, and, and really get short the dollar. So I'm more of a dollar uh, bear for at least until we make marginal new lows. And then you could see a little bit of a counter trend snapback, but I think the trend between now and the next couple of years, this is, this is, uh, you know, this is a pretty sharp decline in the dollar that we saw just since the beginning of last year and, and, you know, should actually be dollar much, much lower. So maybe that's, maybe that's the recipe for, for what happens. So yields has just been tricky in terms of trying to sort of pinpoint anything. If anything, you know, I look at this as being a little counter trend bounce. I'm actually betting on yields getting to 180 to 185 over the next few weeks uh, before we actually turn down. And so yields and stocks likely are going to peak out and fall uh, in the latter part of uh, from May into June. Okay. So from what you're saying, uh, do you think we could have a bear market? Uh, with a weak do- with uh, dollar weakness, uh, yeah. because dollar weakness has yeah. usually, except I did notice uh, last week, this week, uh, when we had last week, when we had dollar weakness, that uh, the market didn't make much hay out of that, which you, normally it did. So you're looking for a bear market in equities, which will be kind of like a bear market in dollar denominated assets, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, that's a good point. Interesting. You know, I, I, I uh, you know, maybe, maybe the real sharp decline in, in equities comes with the bounce in the dollar after we've already sold off very sharply. Uh, okay. Certainly an important point. Um, okay. You know, commodities uh, obviously have been uh, red hot. It's still an area of real focus uh, for me. I, I think you're seeing some really interesting movement in coffee and sugar. And, and those are a couple of my favorites. Uh, you know, I'm not, certain, I'm not as, as bullish on the precious metals just yet. I think we need to test the lows, uh, you know, before we can really. Which lows? 1680? Um, yeah, I, I think that this is just a counter trend snapback. I think you're going to have a final. So maybe maybe this starts right away. May tends to be usually a pretty good month for, for, for gold. So I'm not sure how this is going to all play out, but uh you know, I'm just unwilling to really press long bets here. I look at seasonality is still being weak for 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 gold, really, in, until the month of July through you know September, and I think that uh, sentiment doesn't seem to be as pessimistic yet. A lot of people are trying to catch the lows in gold and think that uh, you know we can we can push up. I certainly have respect for the trend is having turned up a little bit, but I just don't know about the pattern. You know, I think we probably make a final push up to 1825, 1850, and then you peak and you sell off. And that's really the final sell off for gold. And that's a chance to, to get long. Okay. Um, oil's been really fighting um, the dollar bounce and risk off in the market as well as copper. Uh, yeah. Copper to me looks like uh, it might be in some type of topping mode. I, I see a three drive to a top um, formation completing in copper yeah i am i'm look i will i'll believe it when i see it i i I don't disagree that we're a little bit overdone but um you know just just tough to put a lot of stock in 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 this peaking until we see you know some evidence of weakness and yes we are pretty overbought and you look back at, at how uh you know, copper is traded, you're really right up near these prior peaks. So, you know, I think that the, the former highs from February 2011, you know, were, were 10 years from that prior peak, that, that could certainly be important, but I'll, uh, I'll hold off on getting too negative until I really see more evidence of this rolling over. 
Are you following any of the uh, oils, oil shares, or uh, WTI you itself? Know, crude, I, I, it's interesting because the one the one point I would make on on crude is that, and I've started to use a little bit more, you know, Elliot in my uh, analysis, and so I I look at uh, you know the move down that we saw. I thought into uh, May uh, from from the month of of March. Yeah. When we peaked out, it looked very impulsive to me down. And then the yeah. move up has really been so I, I view this as being sort of a five wave decline. And now I think this is really a corrective move. And really we should be finishing this little counter trend bounce. So if this is like an ABC up after the impulsive, then we could get another snapback to the mid 50s before the next move up. So that would surprise, I think, a lot of people. But that would, that really, that would. the key is going to be really holding below this peak. I think oil is really a low risk short at, at 67 to 68. And, and, you know, we'll see what happens with the stocks. We, we've actually had some great outperformance in, in energy. You know, as you know, the yeah. growth has given way to value and that's been largely energy and financials. And so, but I, I think if, if yields push up, that should help financials. So I, I'm, I'm not as, uh, you know, bullish over the next couple of months on energy. I think it's sort of a tricky spot because we've already had a very good bounce here, but uh, you know, we'll see. Okay. Anything else you want to talk about today, Mark? Um, you know, cryptocurrencies, we can sort of touch on that only because okay. we've had, you know, a pretty good decline in, in, in Bitcoin yeah. while the rest of them have been sort of. Is this a high. failing rally that we're getting in Bitcoin right now after that first big break? I think it, it, I'm inclined to think it is only because I have a few cycles that actually turn down uh, really in the spring and particularly into the month of, of June, July, and really don't bottom out until the end of the year. So I'm, I'm wow. thinking that the move down in Bitcoin is, you know, a little bit more serious. And uh, I'd say like 30, 35,000 is a possibility. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say this, that the last, two occasions when we saw monthly RSI get up to 90 on, on Bitcoin were 2017 and uh, 2013, you know, both those occasions we saw 80% drawdowns from, from peak to trough, you know? And so, you know, I had a good deal of bit, amount of Bitcoin a couple of years ago. I actually sold it. I started getting out of it in January, February and sold about 75% of it right around 45,000. And obviously that's premature, but, I, I just look at it as sort of a, uh, a, you know, not the best risk reward here. You know, obviously Ethereum has is, is been the way to go in the last few weeks, but, but it's yeah. got, when you see RSI readings in the, in the 90s with, with Bitcoin and knowing the cycles. And so I look at things like a 19 week cycle for Bitcoin that I think has been outstanding over the last 10 years. And, and uh, you know, it, it gave us the peaks and late, 2017, 2013, and, and it actually peaks out uh, right around now, and we should sell off. And next good year should be right around 2023, but I, I don't like when weekly momentum drops off a cliff when monthly is as high as it is, and now you're seeing you know, daily also start to really deteriorate and, and structurally you're really starting to break down. So you know, if you're long, I, I don't mean to, to scare anybody. I, I just, I'm looking at a deterioration of momentum at a time when my own cycles are turning negative on it. So I'm actually out of cryptocurrencies uh, completely as of now and, and think that, you know, it's going to be difficult for those to hold up if we do see some weakness in risk assets in the month of June. So, you know, I think you have to use 47,000 as being a real stop for longs, or if you want to keep it tighter, 52 for, for, for Bitcoin, Ethereum has been the way to go, and and I think, uh, you know, also how about uh, have you actually been trading uh, doggy coin? I, I I don't own any, but that's certainly uh, yeah. You know, you look at this stellar. crypto page; it's the first time you brought had a whole crypto page. Look at all these symbols, so Mark. <laughs> Mark, you, you've yeah. become a millennial. Yeah, what I a transformation. So. I, I certainly don't feel that young, but yeah, you never know. Any given day. <laughs> All right. Well, I just remember if you're in dog coin to 
bring a paper bag when you go out with it and a leash. Yeah, you just have to keep it it tight on the stuff. You know, I I never pay attention to. I always use technicals above fundamentals. I it's great if they both line up. I obviously have more respect in the long term for things like Ethereum and Bitcoin and Litecoin and Chainlink. But uh, yeah, Doge. If you can just keep the stops tight, then uh, look, it's it's still moving higher. And uh, yeah, I'd probably put stops under today's lows and say if it gets under fifty three cents, then I'm out. Yeah, Blake has to hear about it all the time because his wife bought it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that anyway. shows you the age we're in. You know, you have the CRTs and, and now you have yeah. things like Dogecoin that are outperforming, you know, Apple. And, you know, like our, our, some of our largest stocks are growing sideways in the last six months and the things yeah. that are moving are. Yeah. So let me but, ask you about this. Uh, you're a veteran, uh, you know, and in uh, 2000, yeah, we had a mania with anything in dot-com, but in your whole career, Mark, can you ever remember so many bull and not just bull markets, parabolic real estate, people coming in, paying cash over the offer, yep. commodities in a bull market, equities have been prolific, um, you know, and then you start having things like uh, SPACs and NFTs yeah. that I don't even understand and right. Dogecoin. Uh, isn't that emblematic of, uh, you know, rampant speculation? I mean, I have to agree that, that, that it is. Uh, have you ever is, seen so many parabolic moves in your career? Who, who am I? Well, 1999 was, you know, one for the, the, you know, the record books where, you know, you, you go out and your mailman is driving a Lamborghini and, you know, but yeah. I think we're at a similar age where I know a lot of people that are involved in the options market. And I used to be a market maker, the SIBO and have a real understanding of how option, option pricing works and implied volatility. And, and the majority of people I know that are trading options have no idea how anything is priced. It's just more, Hey, let's buy some calls and it's going to go up. And it's like, they don't know what strike, what volatility anything's trading at. And, and you know, it's, uh, do you so, believe yeah. that these? Do you believe that these um, social media groups like Reddit really have the power and influence in a market to, um, you know, be able to, you know, drive I, I don't, uh, I don't, things? I don't agree in the whole. I, I don't agree in ma- manipulation. You know, I, I think that uh, you know, supply and demand certainly. Uh, should outweigh any group of people thinking they have any certain control over anything. I mean, look at what happened in silver when they attempted that. I mean, yeah. look, it, that's, they went that's to just, SLV though. Yeah. But I you know, I, I know I guys that used to take. I don't think that anybody, I don't think news, cre- you know, rules markets. I think, you know, good news, you know, bad news doesn't always happen at peaks. It's often good news and you're seeing it drying up of volume. So it's not like there's a lot of people at the top that are shorting the market and it all goes down and we're all buying at the lows and it goes up. I, I just think, Cycles uh, tend to reflect, you know, the, the ebbing and flowing of sentiment. And, and yes, at extremes, they, everybody tends to be wrong at the extremes. And so, you know, I, I uh, you know, I wish uh, Mr. Kitty well with his GameStop. I, I, I don't, uh, you know, necessarily share the, the optimism of, uh, of the stock uh, doing much more. I think we've seen a yeah. real implosion in implied volatility and, uh, you know, we'll see. The answer to your question is yes, of course it's speculative. The, the other answer is is how can anybody try to pick the top of, of any of these until you're given really proof because of price behavior and, and, right. and price rules until it doesn't. And that's more important than momentum and sentiment and seasonality than anything. And so, you know, you look at it, it uh, technology should be the one thing that everybody is paying attention to and until you really see a breakdown in, in tech, then you know, you're not going to have any sort of bear market. If anything, this is a chance to to, to buy and think this is going to have a bounce. So, okay. you know, I'll pull in the reins in about three to four weeks. Right at the end of May is a time when I'm going to get very cautious, particularly on a move to new highs. I will start buying tons of VIX calls in September and, uh, you know, really take a lot of money off the table. But, but I think that, and that's me in attempting to pick the top, which I don't recommend to anybody. You know, you need to see that that evidence of, of price deterioration before you really ever, uh, you know, get negative. And, and the Nasdaq let us up. The Nasdaq should lead us down. We've seen, yeah, right. And it has been. 
Yeah, I mean, you've seen you've seen some of the FANG stocks drop off a little bit, but that's more sideways action. That hasn't been substantial weakness. I mean, you have seen it in some of the software names recently, yeah. though. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I, I showed initially at the beginning of the presentation the breakdown in tech, relatively speaking. You know, I would yeah. look at I had to recommend to anybody, you know, areas to look at. I would say for, for to be long, I'd say look at the pharma space. I think pharma's act fantastic. They look really, really good. And that's a very defensive sector in an area where people can position long. Uh, I'm also looking at retail. I think that the vaccinations and the economy starting to pick up uh, steam. Uh, this is going to be an area where if there's any area that gets a last hurrah, it's people going into malls and apparel stores and jewelry. And yeah. the patterns in XRT to me, and it's not a perfect ETF, but, but they... I, I see a final push up in retailing and in the pharma space. And, you know, I just tell people to take a look at long-term charts of Pfizer. Pfizer looks great on a short-term basis and everybody knows that, but I would say go back to 2000 and look what's happening to, you know, companies like, like Pfizer as it starts to move up to the mid forties and really, really interesting. Uh, how about Russell? Uh, the Russell 2000 market has made a new high in quite some time. Yeah. Uh, is that a message in that? Maybe, will that be able to eke out a new high with the rest of the market? I mean, that's that's an interesting point. I think that, uh, you know, you've seen the markets largely stall out over the last few weeks, and, and the Russell's stalled out over the last uh, couple months. Um, you know, I just, you know, here's how I view you know, the Russell, just looking at IWM. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been sort of choppy. I, I just, I can't, uh, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely thinking you probably do have a final push higher to really test or exceed the highs only because okay. I'm, I'm still sort of optimistic for now, but you know, I'll, I'll look, if we start to break down, then I'll respect it. And so as of now, you've seen a little three-way bounce. I think you probably hold, 220 and I IWM and, and you try to push up and, and test the highs and you know I, I don't okay. like to make giant prognostications I'd rather just I know you mean the day-to-day -day price action and say you know right it's bullish until it's not and, and how about I? this mark do the right thing today and tomorrow takes care of itself exactly right follow the trends and, and don't yeah. worry about what the media tells you on anything or you know yes there's definitely except when you're on CNBC <laughs> hey mark why don't you take the time now people have been listening to us for half an hour and when you're on cnbc it's a, you know a snippet so for people who can't get enough of your stuff how do they go about uh keeping in closer touch with your ideas yeah let me, let me pull that uh i will show people very quickly uh, Uh, so I'm at newtonadvisor.com, no S, just uh, Newton Advisor, and uh, I will give you a quick, here, can you see that contact page right here? I'm still showing, you'll have to do a new share, I believe, it's still showing the Russell. Oh, okay, yep, 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 let me see, okay, I will uh, bear with there me we, real quick, so. Uh, here we go. So yeah, here's my contact info. Uh, I put out, you know, two reports every weekday, one at 5.30 a.m., one around two o'clock that includes a technical video of really what's moving, what I think the S&P, I do long and short picks also. So I, I have a regular service for institutions where I provide personalized information. Um, I'm on Twitter. I have a private Twitter that's at uh, Newton Advisors, ML Newton Advisors, that I, I talk about the market, pre-market, and longs and shorts I'm involved with. But for most people, uh, it's cheap. And uh, there's a lot of lot of info in there. Happy to send you copies. If you go to newtonadvisor.com backslash uh, trial, then, then you can certainly uh, get on board for a couple of weeks and give it a test run. Um, but yeah, happy to see if okay. my work can be uh, helpful to your day-to-day uh, -day process. So. Well, well, Mark, uh, I want to thank you for your giving spirit, taking time out of the day to share your ideas that uh, took you years to gain the skills and sharing it openly here with us on FACE. Thank you, Mark.
Thanks, Phil. Thanks to everybody. Thank you, Blake, for your kind words. And uh, yeah, take care, everybody. We'll uh, hope to see you in a, in a couple months. Let's see what the market brings us. You're in the rotation, bro. You know it. I'll, <laughs> I'll get a hold of you. And, uh, you know, good hunting, Mark. And That's right. uh, really, pre it was great talking to you. Thank Likewise. you so much. Thanks, Phil. Uh, Thanks. All everybody. right, everyone. Uh, that's going to be a wrap. Remember, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. You could join the team for the Morning Edge in 15 minutes. Adios, amigos.